Okay, next we're going to speak about uh, access list, just uh, um, introduction, access list overview. That's going to be uh, discussing in this topic. We're going to see what are the access list uh, types and their scopes and why do, ex why do they exist. So access lists primarily are used for traffic classification and based, as you're going to see based on the access list type or version, where it can be used to match or to classify the traffic for other, for further purposes based on either the layer 2, layer 3, layer 4 a header or a combination uh, of those headers. Now, based on that, we have something which is called a non-IP access list, which is going to be whenever you match on the layer 2 header, and of course it's going to be whenever you match on the layer 2 header for clear non-IP traffic. That's going to be based on the ether type value of IPv4 and or IPv6. And then, of course, we have the regular IP access list, um, which is going to be used whenever you want to match on the layer 3 and or layer 4 header. And of course, IP access list means we can, we're going to speak about both IPv4 and IPv6 implementation uh, in there. Now, what is the scope of access list? Why do we have them? So we can use them for control plane. For example, we can control plane, we can use them for route filtering or uh, AD change, so manipulation of the admin distance of a routing protocol, just one example. For the management plane, we can use uh, ACLs to restrict VTI access to, for example, secure SNMP, who can connect to the router to, uh, let's say, pull the router, or where the router is going to, from, so from which source can the router be, be, be pulled via SNMP. For NTP security, likewise, for example, to secure uh, on the NTP uh, master, the server, uh, from which sources to, let's say, uh, expect uh, queries, or on the NTP client, with who to, um, to authentic, to with, who, with which NTP server to, um, to synchronize. For data plane, it's going to be clearly used for packet filtering. Um, that's that's going to be like one, uh, we're going to speak primarily about data plane packet filtering moving forward. And of course, we're going to touch base with other topics as we get into securing the management plane and or the control plane. And then the services plane is going to be used clearly to match on traffic that you, that you want to net, to match on traffic for which you want to provide the uh, IPsec services like your proxy ACL, especially with crypto map configuration, uh, can be used for QoS for marking. So based, you're, you're going to match on the uh, on the IP on the layer three and or layer four header in order to mark the packets for QoS or, for example, for policy routing. So based on the uh, based on the plane you're trying to use the accesses for, you're going to have a different uh, role, different scope of using access list in there. Now, regardless of, of the of, of the scope, regardless of uh, for which plane you want to use the access list, they can be of two types. We can have standard and extended. Now, of course, we're going to speak about uh, variations of those two, about special uh, ACLs, let's say, but primarily we have two types of access lists, standard and extended. Now, configuration-wise, both standard and extended ACLs can be either numbered. Uh, now, this is uh, like called legacy now, uh, where you would, you, would, you would define the access list by, by, by a number, and based on the number, then it's going to be implicitly a standard or a extended access list. Like, for example, if you go on the iOS in here, on any, like on router one, for example, and we say comfy IP access list, and if we hit question mark, uh, let's say just access list is going to be the way to configure the name ACL. So access list, if you hit question mark, then you have in here two ranges. Based on the number, you're going to be able to make them either IP or non IP. We're speaking now about uh, IP access list. So now we have for standard ACLs, we have two uh, number ranges. It's going to be the first one from 1 to 99. So if you define an ACL with a number from 1 to 99, it becomes standard, 1 to 99. 
it becomes standard ACL. Likewise, you define an ACL from one from a number between 1,300 and 1,999. That's going to be your extended range of standard ACLs, sales standard. While, for example, if we speak about the range of 100 to 199, the ACL number, that's going to be your extended access list. And then we have the range between 2000 and 2069, the extended range of extended ACLs. So pretty much it's when you use any of those numbers, the AC implicitly becomes of type standard or extended. Then uh, the named ones, as you're going to see, uh, those is gonna, that's going to be your new implementation, recommended one, uh, pretty much is identified by a meaningful name. So the advantage on that is going to be that, first of all, you don't have, let's say, a limit of the, ac of the number of the access list, assuming that would have been a problem with, uh, with numbered. Uh, let's say that you would have a limit of the, of the number of the ACLs you can configure. So with name, you have no more limit. But the main, main advantage, actually, the only one is going to be that you can put in there a meaningful name, uh, which uh, by looking at the name of the ACL, you're going to pretty much should be able to understand, okay, this access is used for this purpose in there. Now, both access list, of course, support something which is called remarking. So any uh, line can have a remark attached to it. That's additional. But uh, primarily, you'd, I, you'd, you'd like to have a, a name in there to uh, better identify the scope of the access list. Now, with IPv6, uh, when uh, Cisco implemented uh, IPv6 ACLs, uh, legacy features are, have not been migrated, so they have implemented support only for extended named access list in order to for IPv6. So clearly, we got rid of the first of all of the legacy numbered ACLs, and of course about the legacy also standard ACLs. So Cisco only implemented in the code um, what's let's say usable uh, in moving forward uh, in the future, looking in the future. Now, as I was saying, we're going to use access lists for primarily for packet filtering. Uh, as we're going to touch base with other planes, we're going to pretty much uh, speak in there about the usability of access lists. So if you speak, speak about packet filtering, then uh, access lists must be applied at the interface level in or out. Um, and of course, there can be a single ACL applied per interface, per direction, per protocol. Now, this has to make sense because, for example, so uh, let's, let's uh, explain a bit about uh, per interface, per direction, per protocol. So if you look at our diagram in here, then let's pick up uh, router one on the uh, left bottom side of the diagram. So speaking about router one in here, clearly it doesn't make sense to have, for example, inbound in here on this interface, on the gig zero one interface, why would you have inbound in an inbound direction, for example, so why would you have in the inbound direction, let's say, two IPv4 ACLs? So it doesn't really make sense. Uh, it's, it's logically that uh, there is a restriction in there because why would you have to want to put two access lists? Which one should take precedence? Because clearly you cannot combine uh, the rules in there. So for that reason, they don't let you put multiple access lists. You have to put only one ACL um, per direction, in or out, and then per protocol. So per protocol would mean uh, you can have only one IPv4 ACL and one IPv6 ACL and one so IPv6 ACL and one non-IP access list per direction, in or out. You cannot have two IPv6 ACLs in or two IPv6 ACLs out because it doesn't make sense. Then of course, inbound ACLs, you have to be aware, we're going to speak about this when we go into the details and configuration of each of the ACL types. You have to be aware that inbound ACL matches on both control and data plane traffic. So you're going to pretty much, make, you want to make sure that uh, you don't drop traffic distant to the router. Uh, by putting an, an inbound uh, ACL as, as a filter, while the outbound access list by default matches only on data plane traffic. So for example, uh, as you're going to see moving forward, if you also take router 1 in here, router 1, router 1 speaks EIGRP, router 1 speaks EIGRP, 
in uh, AS100 on both the left side on Geek01 and on the right side on Geek00. And we're going to set if you put an inbound ACL, whatever the type is, and you don't allow EIGRP, then EIGRP is going to drop, the adjacency fails. Because inbound access list, and it makes sense being an inbound ACL uh, to give you an option to, con to restrict or to control both transit traffic uh, routed by the router and also uh, control plane traffic destined to the router. While if you put an ACL on Geek00 in the outbound direction, then even though you're already IGRP also in there, you don't have to worry about uh, control plane traffic leaving the router because that, that cannot be matched by default uh, by an outbound ACL. So outbound ACLs were designed only for data traffic, for transit traffic, while inbound ACLs were designed to uh, control both control plane traffic and uh, data plane traffic. Now, if you're asking yourself like why, why there's a difference and for example, like why, why with inbound access lists uh, we can match on, on, on both transit traffic, data plane traffic and control plane traffic, you have to understand that back in the days, we didn't have control plane policing or control plane protection. So it made sense that the only way that at that point you would control, let's say, traffic destined to the router was via only a inbound access list. So the iOS was not at that point feature rich to have like, you know, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of options we can have to do, which we can have today to secure the control plane. Back in the days, uh, it was something different. So it makes sense they, uh, they, they designed the inbound ACLs to match on both data traffic and control plane traffic. As I was saying, uh, you have to make sure you make a logic about everything if you want to have sustainable and uh, for, for knowledge to, to stay long term with you. You have to understand the whys uh, and how it works. Now moving to the specific, the each specific ACL standard access list restriction. So they can, with standard ACLs you cannot match on the layer 3 protocol. It has to be IPv4, so you cannot say like, uh, you cannot match, for example, like on, uh, um, for example, on PIM, which, have, which has its own protocol number, or on OSPF. Uh, you can only match on the, it has to be IPv4, you cannot match on the protocol, and you cannot match on the layer 4 header likewise. So pretty much standard ACLs were designed a long time ago to match on the source IP address from the source IP from the IP header, and uh, standard ACLs, ex there's an exception to this rule. If you use a standard ACL to control uh, VTI, to, to do VTI line restrictions in the outbound direction by using a standard ACL, then that's gonna match on, uh, your, on the destination of, of the traffic. So for example, as I've seen, that's an exception to the rule. If you go on this router on router one in here, on router one, and for example, you put a uh, online VTI, online VTI 04, online VTI 04, you put an access class on a restriction access class, access class, uh, ACL out, ACL out, and in this ACL you have a single line defined, let's say in the ACL you have permit host, permit host let's say 1111, it means that whoever is attached to the VTI lines of the router, so it's remotely connected to the router for management, then they can only go out to manage other, other devices if the destination IP, if the destination IP is 1111. So this is an exception to the standard ACL uh, when it's gonna match on the destination IP of the, of the packet, not on the source IP. Why is in there? Because again, back in the days, we didn't have extended ACLs, so they had to, when they came up with the outbound VTI line access restriction, they have standard ACLs and they said, okay, let's, uh, let's use this uh, this way. Uh, that's, why have an, that's why we have an exception in this use case. Now, extended ACLs, clearly, uh, we can say that they have, they have no restrictions. You can match on the protocol number from the layer 3 header, like OSPF, EIGRP, ESPAH. So we know that all of those protocols, they run on top of IP, not on top of TCP UDP. So they don't have a layer 4 header, they have, they have their own uh, IP protocol number. You can also match on both the source and destination IP 
from the layer 3 header, not only on the source, and you can also clean and match on the layer 4 protocol, TCP UDP, and the source uh, and or destination port numbers. Additionally, so uh, we have pretty much, as I was saying, you can, you can pretty much using an standard ACL, you can match on uh, like any kind of uh, attribute uh, close to from the layer 3 and or layer 4 header. So you can actually match on the TCP flags, like on SYN, SYNAC, we're going to see a couple of implementation options in there for the NetApp service attacks. You can also match on the IPv4 uh, or IPv6 uh, layer 3 header options. You can match on IPv4, IPv6 fragments, especially we're going to see how the router deals with uh, non-initial fragments. We're going to need to understand that before we move forward to how, for example, zone-based policy firewall deals with non-initial fragments. And of course, you can match on the uh, IPv4, IPv6 marking, the layer 3 marking, the precedence or the DACP value. Uh, you can match on those as well for traffic classification.